Creating a square for a piece does not necessarily mean that you have to occupy it. At times the threat of using the square is enough to secure certain advantages, in this case tying down the opponent's pieces to the defense of the c4 square. a2 a4. This strong move fixes the pawn structure on the queen side to white's advantage. b5 b4. Knight c3 b1. In general black would love to play c5 c4 but white has a4 a5 in reply giving black no compensation for the pawn whatsoever a6 a5 knight b1 d2 white has control over the c4 square but he will not rush to play his knight there and allow exchanges. In the game black neglects his king side and white launches an attack there, meaning that he never gets around to occupying the c4 square. Still the usefulness of the square is dominant in many lines, as black has to defend it vigorously. Perhaps black considered. f7 f5. But this would only leave his position with multiple weaknesses. Perhaps black considered. f7 f5. But this would only leave his position with multiple weaknesses. Bishop c8 b7. Rook a1 c1. Rook a8 c8. Knight f3 h4. f7 f6. Bishop g5 e3 g7 g6 bishop e3 h6 knight e8 g7 bishop f1 d3 as long as the black knight is on b6 the d2 knight will wait and might consider going to the king side as well queen c7 e7 queen d1 g4 rook f8 f7 rook c1 c2 rook c8 c7 g2 g3 bishop b7 c8 queen g4 e2 at this point black should probably stay passive but psychologically this is hard f6 f5 f6 f5 f2 f4 white is threatening nh f3 which would win the battle for the e5 square f5 captures e4 knight d2 captures e4 Bishop c8 b7. Looks natural, but white has a brilliant continuation that brings the knight on h4 back into the game. Bishop h6 captures g7. King g8 takes on g7. f4 f5. g6 takes on f5. Knight h4 captures f5. Is even worse. Knight h4 takes on f5. 
is even worse. Rook f7 captures g7. f4 f5. Queen e7 d8. f5 captures g6. h7 captures g6. Rook e1 f1. The threat of nf6 plus is devastating. Knight b6 captures d5. Bishop d3 c4. Finally, after 18 moves the control over the c4 square comes in handy, albeit only in a sideline. King g8 h8. Rook c2 d2. Knight d5 c3. Queen e2 e3. Bishop b7 captures e4. Rook d2 captures d6. Queen d8 captures d6. Queen e3 h6. Rook g7 h7. Rook f1 f8. Queen d6 takes on f8. Queen h6 takes on f8. Knight c3 e2. Bishop c4 takes on e2. Queen d8 captures d6. Rook f1 d1. Black will have to allow either 25. Qx e4 with a winning position or. Queen d6 c6. Queen e3 h6. King h8 g8. Bishop e2 c4. With a mating attack. Knight c3 e2. Rook f7 captures g7. f4 f5. Queen e7 d8. f5 captures g6. h7 captures g6. Rook e1 f1. The threat of nf6 plus is devastating. Knight b6 captures d5. Bishop d3 c4. Finally, after 18 moves the control over the c4 square comes in handy, albeit only in a sideline. King g8 h8. e5 captures f4. Knight e4 captures d6. Queen e7 captures d6. Bishop h6 takes on f4.
after queen d6 takes on d5 bishop f4 takes on c7 bishop c8 b7 bishop d3 e4 queen d5 captures e4 queen e2 captures e4 bishop b7 captures e4 we can improve on Portish's original annotations with Rook c2 takes on c5 Winning immediately Rook c2 captures c5 Winning immediately Rook f7 captures f4. g3 captures f4. Queen d6 captures d5. Queen e2 e5. White wins the ending. G3 captures F4. Queen D6 takes on F4. Queen E2 E4. White is winning in the long run, but Black accelerated the process with his next move. Queen F4 G5. Rook C2 G2. Queen G5 D8. Knight H4 captures G6.